Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and we are down to the final weapon review in the series, none other than Aerith. I think that is a very fitting bookmark for the end of this series. Uh, you will notice I did not choose to do a Vincent video, and that's just because he came out like two months ago. I did an extensive breakdown of all of his weapons. I know he's gotten a couple more since then, but I just felt like since I'd just recently gone through all of his stuff, I wasn't going to belabor the point, and there's not a lot of, you know, nostalgia or history in there because, you know, he's hasn't been around for very long. So, Aerith is going to be the last one. I'm really excited to do her because, you know, back in the day when I was first creating content for this game, I was constantly trying to think of different video ideas and, you know, really trying to think outside the box um, for content, you know. And I decided to do a character spotlight series. Now, it didn't actually become a series because I never did any videos past the first one. Um, and I think part of it was just because, you know, the video didn't do as well as I was hoping it might, which was fine. Um, but then also content was picking up and I just had other stuff to cover. However, in that series, I did one video. I did one character spotlight and I chose Aerith as my first one. Why? because I needed everybody to know that I thought Aerith was hands down the best character in the game. Now this was in about October, mid-October of last year. So the game had been out for give or take six weeks when I did that video, and Aerith was being featured on literally everything. Still to this day, she's, I think, been featured more than any other character. Uh, when you, If you watched the gear review I did, she has the most outfits of anybody. There were five, obviously several others had four, but Aerith is just a mainstay in this game. Uh, she's not always the best in slot for healing or support for different content, but very often uh, she is. Also, they've given her so many different things that, you know, you can really build Aerith as a DPS magical unit if you want. Um, I still like to use her primarily as a support or healer, almost exclusively. But it doesn't mean that she doesn't have access to a lot of good weapons. So this video may take quite a bit longer than some of the others. Uh, so strap in. The first weapon, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in order of where they are in this list. Uh, so there's no particular order. Um, Dawn's Prayers is the first weapon that I'm going to highlight, and it's just because of the R abilities. Uh, this was a, an event weapon around New Year's, and it was, I believe. Glenn got one as well, um, so I think right after her, in like the second part of the event. But this was the first weapon that had, uh, that I can think of, just straight up two defensive R abilities for magic, physical, um, and you know, when you need it, that's a really good way to shore those up. So that's the first weapon. The second one is Chocobo Staff, another free weapon. Aerith's free weapons are generally pretty damn good. Uh, heal and magic defense. I've talked about this in some other videos. Uh, when you're looking at, you know, building up a character for heal or survivability purposes, uh, HP and magic defense are very good. Heal and magic defense, um, even better for a healer a lot of the time. So this weapon got a lot, and I mean a lot of play from me and a lot of other people, both as a sub weapon and as a, uh, you know, one of your two main weapons. And that's because Solid Man Award, when it came out, was extremely good. Uh, being able to give, you know, magic defense increase to a single ally was a big deal. And for free, I mean, you couldn't really pass that up. Next, we have Prism Rod. And I remember when this banner came out, it was pretty early on in the game. Uh, I did not pull for it at all. Um, some people did. I think this was the infamous banner, If uh, for those of you who were around at the time where people pulled and then there was some like, there was like a typo in the notice that I don't even remember exactly what the typo was, but I think it was something to do with, you know, announcing what could be gotten on the banner. And I think it had to do something with Sephiroth maybe. I don't a hundred percent remember, but I do remember this. Uh, people complained and they overreacted uh, to, you know, it was it was one of the I would say in this game it's been the biggest controversy that that it has taken place uh, and it was pretty early on. So what happened was anybody who had pulled on that banner 
got like full reimbursement. They literally gave them free crystals for whatever they spent before that, uh, that, you know, mistake was fixed. Obviously that put a lot of people who, who paid, especially whales at a huge advantage because they just got an influx of free stuff. Uh, and they still got to keep everything they pulled. This uh, upset some people, uh, especially in the free to play or people who just didn't pull because they're like, well, I, you know, I'd have pulled if I'd have known. Yeah, I get it. Um, I don't think I wasn't personally upset, even though I didn't benefit from this. But man, what a time. Uh, what a time. And so anyway, getting into the actual ability. And by the way, I have it at OB10. I have I don't think I've ever placed this item on a wish list. Uh, they just wanted to give it to me a lot. And I'm fine with that. 800% magic wind damage, very nice, uh, very good companion to Sephiroth's Dark Heavens uh, as the magic, you know, counterpart to that. Uh, boost HP, always really nice to see, and then boost wind potency, slight bit low, uh, we're not looking at 39, we're looking at 36, but nonetheless, uh, it is a solid wind weapon. It also has a heal boost, not quite the cure-all that we were start starting to see later, uh, but it also has a sigil boost, so... You know, in case you still wanted to run Aerith as some sort of healer, uh, and back then that was a big deal, uh, you could do it. The next weapon we're going to look at is Full Metal Staff. Uh, not very noteworthy anymore, but in the beginning of the game, uh, at five stars, being able to actually just do an AoE debuff on physical attack was a pretty big deal. Got through a lot of content because of that, and 20, 20 second duration uh, was was just fine at that time. Uh, and, you know, uh, if you compare this to another weapon we're gonna look at later that does buffs for your team, that duration was significantly shorter. Therefore, this weapon for me saw more play at that time. Um, there's really, this is not a weapon I would necessarily go for now. In fact, probably not at all. However, uh, in the beginning of the game, uh, you know, in, in the very early days, that was a weapon that uh, I think Quite a few Aerith lovers used uh, to a lot of success. Um, I'm gonna. This weapon here is just fine for a secondary weapon, but that's you know or a sub weapon for you know lightning users, especially magic lightning users. It's actually quite good, uh, but not much to say. Kamura Watt, perhaps one of the best weapons in the game. Uh, this has, man, uh, divided so many accounts in my opinion, because. It's limited. It was limited. You, you either pulled for it and you got it or you didn't. And I really wish that they would make this weapon um, available to wishlist. Obviously, I have it at OB6, so I don't need any more copies of it. But I think a lot of people uh, didn't realize how good this weapon was. I was one of those people, to be fair. I did not quite see the value, uh, which sounds dumb when you look at it now after seeing how amazing it is. Um, I was just talking to a few people in my Discord the other day, and legitimately, I told them, when I build any setup, any setup, the first question I typically ask myself is like, would Kimura Wand be good in this setup? I mean, that's how good of a weapon it is. AoE physical attack increase, starting at OB6, it just goes straight to high for your whole team. And magic defense increase potency high for the whole team. Th that is insanely good. Like, insanely good. One cast, you cover so many things that you need. Especially then, if you're actually using a physical attack team that also needs magic defense, like, it's good enough to have one or the other. Um, if you need both, it's invaluable. It is invaluable. And even at 5-star, it's still mid-potency and still stacks to high. So one more cast, and you're just as good as if you had an OB6. Uh, that... Like, again, that's just nuts. There, there's just no weapons that do that. HP, always good, especially on a weapon like this. Uh, you, if you, this is in the main slot, like, a massive buff debuff extension, like, in the main slot, 150% duration to everything that you're, you're buffing, or at least most of it. And you've pretty much solved your HP needs as well. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I almost forgot about this. Then it's got two boosts here. One is a, a single target cure uh, heal boost and then the all cure. So you literally like this weapon just does so many things. It enables Aerith to be like there was a time before this weapon came out when she was kind of starting to fall off. Like 
she was still very viable as a dedicated healer, but, you know, people like Matt were really starting to get the edge on her because they could do, you know, things like Recovery Circle, where you've got the physical defense increase and an AoE heal. Uh, then they came out with this, and Aerith, I feel like, got back up on Reigning Supreme in that category. I could talk about Kimura Wand for a really long time. It is just that good. Uh, I, I do feel bad for anybody who didn't get it, but that's okay. I am sure there will be another busted weapon that comes out uh, that does really great things in the future. Just You just have to wait. Moving on to Umbrella. This is my favorite weapon from all of the guild stuff. Uh, I took it to OB6 immediately um, because it's really helpful for clearing Ramu, uh, EX anyway. Uh, however, I have not cleared it, so don't get it twisted. I still haven't been able to because I went in on Tifa and don't have uh, the proper setup for physical water. Anyway, that's a whole side story. However, the Lightning Resist is really helpful for that. I don't know if it would be extremely helpful for other things, but the Magic Defense All Allies, very, very helpful. Uh, for support materia, it's got the cure all, so you're not losing out on that. If you want to main hand it, you still have the ability to cure everybody, which is pretty important if you're playing Aerith. However, Cleansing Rain is a single target cure, and it's 100% healing potency. That is extremely strong, and you can cast it on somebody and just watch a huge chunk of their HP go up, um, which is also kind of nice because you don't have to use another cure materia to do that. I, I think this is a very solid guild weapon, and it's not um, it's not just a coincidence or you know something like that. Why I have this one as my first one that I purchased, the first one I took to OB6. Flora Wand. Uh, this played a big part in the last guild battle for me. Um, starting at OB6, you have wind resist decrease or wind breach potency high to a single target, you also have a mid-potency physical defense decrease. So really enabling somebody like Sephiroth who does physical wind damage with this weapon and for three ATB, by the way. So power creep has hit us in several different ways. One of those ways is giving more uh, buffs and debuffs or you know multiple uses for one weapon. Another one is also lowering the amount of ATB it takes. And for somebody who's you know on full-time heal duty or something like that, uh, ATB is a very, very precious resource, so 3 ATB is not to be taken lightly. <laughs> On top of that, you've got boost attack, which is a high amount, 62, and boost wind potency, making this a great sub-weapon as well for wind users if you're not using Aerith in the setup. Uh, it also has all cure. Um, many of Aerith's weapons do, because they know that so many people used her as a dedicated healer, and so if you're taking off Fairy Tail, uh, you know, you, you kind of lose access to healing everybody unless they give you this. So very, very nice, nicely set up. It's even got the wind uh, ability damage increase, like so that, you know, you don't have to put Prism Rod or something like that on her. Um, just a great, great weapon. Coming over to Fairy Tale, I mean, this, this is like classic Aerith. This is quintessential Aerith. This is exactly uh, the most used weapon for her since I've started the game and continues to be still very highly used. Why? I mean, it's got uh, AoE heal at OB10, 74% to all allies. I'm not saying that that is better than every other healing weapon, but because Aerith is already just set up to be, you know, the dedicated healer, this weapon is super good. And there are times when I put it in the second slot uh, even when I have, you know, a cure-all in the main weapon on the, the support materia, just because that extra few percentages, uh, if you look here, 69% is just better, right? Um, because you're, you're going to take a 40% decrease on your cure materia, and sometimes you need that extra heal to really keep up, going back to the whole ATB use thing. Uh, for support materia, we don't really care about Fairy Tail, what it's got. Um, the boost heal is not amazing, but... It's just the weapon is just so necessarily good for her that uh, it, you don't really care about anything else other than the C ability. Mithril Rod, this is a weapon that uh, was also used quite a bit in the beginning of the game. It still has niche uses. Um, the fact that it gives both physical and magical defense to the entire party. Uh, it doesn't go past mid potency. 
Uh, that's the like one you know way they've set it back. But I mean, she had access to this in the beginning of the game. This was in her starting kit, and being able to shore up both defenses uh, simultaneously, super super useful. The other drawback though is the duration is quite short, uh, and until you get to six star, it's only low potency for everybody. Still useful. Don't get me wrong. There, uh, there were plenty of times I used this even at five star. But even at six, you're looking at like a 12 second duration, uh, which, which before we got the buff debuff extension stuff, uh, just really didn't last that long. So you had to make sure you timed this properly. And the fact that it cost five ATB was only another drag because with that short duration, that meant you, you know, if a boss is ticking down a big move, you had to use it, you know, within let's say about 10 seconds of the move going off and then start recharging that ATB for an AOE heal, which inevitably you probably wouldn't quite have right when the move was done, which always throws a little bit of a monkey wrench in your situation. However, it is a noteworthy weapon, I think just because of what it used to be, especially. Um, umbrella, Sun Umbrella, to distinguish from regular Umbrella. Sun Umbrella is one of the other best weapons I think that's ever come out for Aerith as far as you know, anybody who was in, you know, played this game in the beginning knows this weapon had a lot, a lot of utility. Um, I am still trying to get it to OB6. I have actually put this on wishlist several times, but usually have been unable to come up with any. Uh, however, well, let's just look at it this way. At OB5, you're looking at both a physical defense and a magical defense decrease, which makes this just such a great enabling weapon for your DPSers. Mid potency. Uh, well, it's stacked to mid, but it's low in the beginning. Where it shines is once you get it to OB6, because now you're just mid potency on both, which means you just need one cast, and then you've got 25 seconds to just kind of throw everything you can uh, at the boss. Uh, also, magic attack and magical ability potency make this a great sub weapon as well. Um, you, you really still, I think this is a still a viable weapon, although... Um, you know, maybe a little bit harder to work in as content has gotten harder and things of that nature, but I still think that Sun Umbrella is a very, very viable weapon. Coming down to the end of the list, there are a couple more weapons that I think they're just noteworthy because of the fact that they allow Aerith to do that damage. So we've we've gone over her Wind 1, which is 800%, right? Now with Egg Staff, we're getting into her Fire, and she does have a Fire Arcanum as well. So 630% magic fire damage to all enemies, not really bad, honestly, because a lot of weapons that did an elemental type damage to all enemies were usually capped at like 500%. So 630 is a pretty good improvement over that. But against a single enemy, you get more damage. 1.3 times more damage, which comes out to 819%, thereby making it stronger than even things like Sky Splitter as far as the potency of the C ability. Now, our abilities, you've got boost HP and boost fire potency. Those are perfectly fine. You also have another cure-all. So the developers have always kept in mind that, hey, people use Aerith as a dedicated healer a lot of the times. Uh, if you're going to throw something like this in, we, we still want to allow her to be able to, you know, be utilized in that healing capacity. And I think that that is great. Last year, we have Snowflake. And again, another weapon that does the ice damage and then a magic defense decrease. So not as good as the breach weapons. As far as, you know, we've seen a lot of power creep come in where that percentage would be in the 600 range, maybe even 700% with Sephiroth's earth weapon, I think. Um, but then you have the magic defense decrease, whereas normally you, you'd want to see like a breach on that. And it's also mid potency is where it starts as opposed to like a high potency breach. So for those reasons, I don't think it's quite as good. However, to for a counterpoint to that, you could always set this up on an ice team with a breacher. And now instead of double breaching, you, you have the breach plus magic defense decrease, which is going to make somebody like Sephiroth really able to do a lot of magical ice damage. The magic attack on this amazing uh ice potency is is standard cure all once again because we wouldn't want to leave Aerith without a way to heal everybody or to play that role in some capacity now a couple of weapons that i have not gone over that i do not have one of them is garnet's rod which was great when it came out uh, but i don't think that it's 
that noteworthy anymore. So I'm going to just kind of mention that I don't have it and didn't go over it and leave it at that. The other one though is Citric Wand. And this is another ice enabling wand. And what it does at OB10 is increases ice damage. I believe it's the only weapon or one of only two, possibly at most, that does this. But it increases ice damage for a single ally, so you can you don't have to target yourself. High potency, which is big. And then also, if your HP is 50% or more, magic attack increase for a single ally potency mid. So you could really combine something like Snowflake and Citric Wand with a team like Sephiroth, and I don't know, just gonna say like Lucia or Zac or whatever. And you could, I mean, you could just set it up to where you've got the breach, you've got the ice damage, you've got the magic defense down. If that all came together, man, the, that edged wing hit, it would be uh, insanely powerful. And so that is uh, the, the video for Aerith's weapons. I, I do still think that she is one of the best characters in the game. Um, she just has so much versatility. You could build her as a magical DPS. You can build her uh, in a lot of ways as a breacher. You can build her as a healer, whether a dedicated full-time healer or a hybrid healer and you know support unit or even secondary damage dealer. Like there's just so many things you can do with her. Um, I th th there's just not much else to say about that. I think the last thing to just kind of go over is what I would be trying to go for if I had a couple vouchers to spend. It's it's really difficult to, to make this call um, because there's so many things that it really depends on what your account does. If you want her to be a damage dealer, I think we've covered those pretty recently, you can remember. If you want her to play kind of a role like I do, then I think you're like really having to see what it is that you're lacking, okay? Uh, Sun Umbrella is a perfectly fine choice. Um, like, again, I think you really want to get this to OB6, so I probably would consider not taking it if I just had one copy. But if I was somewhere close to OB6ing it, I would really consider it. I think Flora Wand is a really, really great tool to have if you need wind. Um, I don't know that I would go try to get something like Prism Rod, but hey, based on your account, maybe that's necessary. Um, really there's just so many things you could go for here. I, I think this would be one. I used a lot of her weapon parts to OB6 this recently, so I do think there's a lot of value in that. I think some of these other weapons have a pretty good amount of value. I don't know exactly. I know I was confused in some of my previous videos on like the April 29th thing for garbs versus weapons. I think weapons, you might be able to just pick whatever it is that came out. Um, like if you could pull for it, on a wish list or in um or maybe if you could pull for it in regular tickets then maybe that'll be something you can get i don't 100 percent know how that's going to work um and, and i guess that's maybe the most guidance i can really give on what i would go for with Aerith. i mean as my account stands i'm probably going to try to get one copy of sun umbrella so i can finally ob6 it and then i'm not really sure what my second one uh will be at this point probably trying to lean towards OB6ing a second weapon. Well, I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope that you found it helpful. Um, thank you so much, uh, especially, man, if you're one of those people that watch like every one of these videos, thank you. I can tell you, I spent a lot of time making and editing these um, over the weekend, this um, Labor Day weekend to try to be able to get these out because I know that I won't have time when I get home from work this week. So thank you. Thank you. I hope you're as hyped as me for the one year anniversary. I hope these videos helped build some of that hype. As always, thanks for watching.